Hello everyone, my name is Michel Villanueva and I will guide you through the next two sections of our introduction to Singularity Obtainer. In this chapter, we will study how to share files between the host and the container. The question that we will answer is how to read and write files on the host system from within the container. And our objectives are map directories on your host system to directories within your container and learn about the bind paths included automatically in all the containers. If you remember, one of the key features about the containers is they are isolated. It means they have no access to the host system or the files that are hosted within them. It means files on the host system are not accessible within the container. However, it is a common case that you would like to access files that are located in the host system and are needed inside the container, or you want to write files from within the container to some directory in the host. It's for that reason that Singularity provides option to bind directories between the container and the host. We have already used this earlier in the module when we exploring the options available to run Singularity containers. Let's start talking about the bind paths included by default. Then, for each container that is executed, Singularity binds automatically some directories by default. This depends on the configuration defined by your system administrator. By default, Singularity binds the user's home directory, the current directory when the container is executed, and the system-defined paths that usually are the temporal location Proc, dev, and etc. Again, depending on the configuration defined by your system admin. Let's use, for example, the container that we built during the last chapter. This is called root in Ubuntu.sif. In this case, I already have the container here. Take a look at the current directory. So, in this case, for me, it is a directory inside my home that is called hsf slash singularity. Now, if we open a shell using Singularity within the container that we created during the last chapter, we can do that using Singularity shell root in Ubuntu. So this is opening a shell inside the container. And let's look again at what is the current directory. You can see it is exactly the same. And actually, if I look at the list of files that are inside the directory, it's exactly the same one as the one outside the container. The reason is because, as we mentioned before, Singularity will bind the directory in which the container is being executed. Let's say that for any reason you prefer to not mount one of the directories that is specified in the Singularity configuration. For that, the option No Mount is available. Let's go out of the container and let's try this time to open the shell but using the option no mount home. So for this, we use singularity shell again. We're specifying that we don't want to mount home. If you try to take a look at where are you located now, you can see that you are in the root directory. And let's say, we try to open the home again. In this case, it's my username, and you can see that there is no such file of directory. The reason is because Singularity is explicitly not mounting home this time. And we can take a look actually to this. In this case, there is no home mounted as we ask with this option. Let's go out and take a look at the second possibility that is user-defined bind paths. Singularity provides this mechanism to specify additional binds when executing a container via command line. Singularity also offers the option with environment variables, and we will take a look at both possibilities. The first option is bind with command line, that is using the option dash dash bind or dash b, that will specify the directories that must be linked between the host and the container. This is available for run, exec, shell, the options that we have seen before for the command line, as well as for instance, but this will be covered in the next chapter. 
The syntax for using this bind option is to specify the source and the destination, and the path must be absolute. If you try to use relative paths, this will be rejected. For example, let's create a directory in the host that contains a constant that can be useful for your analysis. First of all, let's create inside my home a new directory called my data. And inside my data, let's say the mass of the muon, just as an example. We can actually store this inside the new directory that we just created. And let's call it muon mass.txt. Let's take a look. It must be there actually. All right, we have the muon mass inside the home. But let's say this is very important for your analysis and you would like to have this in a high level directory, like for example, slash data. We can do that with bind. If we call singularity shell using the option bind, we can specify we want to bind this new directory as data inside the container. And to confirm this, let's take a look and what is inside data in the container. It's actually the mass of the muon, such as we ask it for. Now you can use this everywhere as a root level directory. One more possibility is to not specify the destination, just the path of the source. Like for example, if we try to mount CBMFS, it has sense that the path is the same inside the container just slash cbmfs. We can do that. Let's go out and again, let's call singularity shell and we will call bind this time without specifying a destination. And again, our container. So if I take a look, cbmfs is located there and it will contain the same structure as in the host. The next option is useful when you want to mount a directory inside any container that is executed in your system. This is done using the environment variable singularity bind. For example, let's make that this environment variable points to CBMFS. We can confirm this. Now, CBMFS is contained inside singularity bind. And let's execute once more our container, but this time without specifying any bind. Well, you can look here at the warning. This is just related to the change between singularity to obtainer that we mentioned in the first directory. But let's not worry about that for now. Take a look at the root path, and you can see that CVMFS is located there. Remember, we didn't specify explicitly during the execution that we wanted to mount CVMFS, but since it was specified via the environment variable, it will be there for any container that we execute in the system. All right, that's everything for this chapter. Let's move to the next one.